Hello there, friends. Today we're going to be solving problem four from section 2-1 from number theory by George E. Andrews. Problem goes as follows. We're given the definition of an integer ideal, which goes as follows. If j is a non-empty set of integers, it's called an integer ideal if the following two conditions are held. If n and m are in j, then m plus m and n minus m are in j. If n is in j and r is an integer, then r n is in j. And so the question asks us, I'll erase this. We're, getting, we're given this set j m as the set of all integers that are integer multiples of a particular integer m. So m is just some random but arbitrary integer. And every value in, in j of m is some multiple of m. And we're being asked to prove that j of m is an integer ideal. So first, we'll break this down into cases, one for each each of the cases we're trying to show. So first, we're going to I'm going to show the second case. That is that if n is in j and r is an integer, then rn is in jm. So first, m is clearly in j of m. This is definitional to some extent. We're sort of given this, so it's something we can just assume. Since, because j of m is all multiples of m, m times 1 is a multiple of itself, so it's in there. So, r m is clearly then in j of m, since j m contains all integer multiples oh sorry Ooh. is all integer multiples of m since m is in j and we can find this multiple here then clearly all of its multiples are there since by definition j of m has all multiples of m so that's case that's the second part shown. Now I'm going to show the first one. The first one, in case you forgot, states if n and m are in j, then m plus m and m minus m are in j. So I'll break this down into cases. This, is, this will be case two anyway. So this is the subcase one. We're trying to show n plus m. So since n is an element of j, we can write this as n. We can write we can say that n is equal to some integer times m. Because by definition, j of m contains all multiples of m. And we'll just state that m is m in this case. So we could, better yet, just to not assume it, we'll even say that m is also, just to make this more concrete, we'll say n plus s, where s is also in j of m, and s is also equal to t of m. So these are two random integers. So we'll say that n plus s is equal to because we can rewrite both of them as rm plus t of m. We can factor out the m. So this is r plus t times m, which in fact is an element of j of m. This is because since r and t are both integers and the, 
the field of integers are enclosed under scalar and addition, then this is still an integer. And an integer times n is clearly within all the multiples of m. So we've shown that this is the case. Now, if I'll, I'll do the negative too, even though it's essentially the same in this case. We'll do case two, and we'll just do n minus s. Again, since n and s are elements of j of m, we can write them as such. n is equal to, sorry, r m. And we'll say s is equal to t of m, where r and t are elements of the integers. We'll then subtract the two, r. We'll take n minus s is equal to r m minus t of m, which is equal to we can just remove that r minus t, which is clearly also part of j of m because subtraction is just addition. This is still an integer. And since this is just an integer times n, this is still within the multiples of j of m. So since we've shown both statements are true, i and 2, then we've shown that j of m is an integer ideal. So the proof has been shown. If you have any questions regarding the problem or you need something clarified, feel free to post that in the comments section. If for some reason, if for some reason you need, there's any questions you'd like to ask, you want me to solve something else from a different book, workbook, homework, worksheet, etc. Feel free to comment that as well. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day.